TBN lift restriction on domiciliary accounts. Holders can now have access to at least $10,000 of their money every day. Welcome to Business Daily. I am Yusuf Akogu. We take our top stories. Glad to have you back. Now we take you to the stock market, of course, to update you about how the market went down last week. Friday, the market is on right now, but we are giving you the data as it went down on Friday. And we start with a uh, snapshot of the market. Of course, the All Share Index went down 0.33% uh, on Friday, of course, to close uh, in, uh, in the negative territory. Why the All Share Index also lost a little over 500 basis points to remain here 59,000.96 basis points point as well. Uh, the uh, market cap also, uh, remains strong though, uh, uh, even though it lost about uh, uh, close to 500 billion, 32.1 trillion. It ended on Friday. Of course, 622.416 million volume of shares, value at 6.510 in the deals of over 9,000 over 9,000, rather, 9,417 exchange hands among investors on the day. Of course, we look at our gainers for the day. We have, uh, of course, the like of WAPIC, uh, FTN, Cocoa, and, of course, Trans Cohort, all doing uh, good there. Most of them are middle cap uh, stock there. Uh, WAPIC uh, gaining 6.6 six, uh, Cobo to close positive at 10%. And, of course, if you look at it, FTN, Cocoa also gaining 135 Cobo there to close positive at uh, 9.76%. Uh, and of course, trans cohorts also gaining a huge number there. You will say 14 naira, 60 kobo, 9.69%. Uh, On the losing side, uh, we have uh, the likes of a uh, name insurance, Abebit, Abebit uh, uh, and of course, CWG Computer Warehouse Group as well, or not doing so good there, uh, down 9.87%, 9.52%, and of course 9.50% respectively. In terms of sector performance, uh, I mean, drop trader, I mean, to say it's uh, uh, the Living Trust Mortgage Bank uh, gaining 103 uh, million volume of shares uh, that it traded at the United Bank for Africa, Access Bank also doing great there, uh, though not uh, the, not the volume of trading you will be expecting from these two top, I mean, Taiwan banks in Nigeria capital market in terms of sector performance we have uh, of course all of them down in the negative territory reflecting why the market closed that day negative 0.33 percent as it were the banking sector is down industrial down consumer goes down uh, oil and gas down of course the insurance sector all in red we expect a rebound today uh monday of course let's look at the rest of africa uh they are not also doing so well south africa is down that johannes box stock exchange is down 0.56 percent and of course it's only in ghana they are our next donable uh, uh the market has maintained the same position as it were last week 0.13 percent positive but down there in kenya nairobi stock exchange is down zero point zero one uh, percent uh, i have joining me now from lagos uh charles fakroga uh stock market analyst he joins me via phone from the uh lagos uh mr charles good morning good morning yusu thank you for having me on the show glad to have you again tell us how is the market faring at this moment 
Okay, looking at my machine currently, yes, the market is looking positive. Um, right now, as I speak, the all share index is 0.15% up. And um, we have done volume of over 113 million units of shares have been traded. Currently, on the gainers chart, what I'm seeing FTN Coco is gaining, Honeywell Flower, Unity Bank. UBA, all these ones are already on the positive side in the green. In the green now, looking at the loser side now, I can see LLX, John Oak, Charms, of course, um, Unilever, and of course, um, SKB, that is um, Smithline B Charm. Mm. You know, these are on the gainers' um, charts. But again, like we always say as traders, the market has just Started um, just a few minutes ago when we had the continuous trading. This is from 10:15, and now this is about 11 and thereabout. So the market is still very fresh, and um, we'll see. We're going to be seeing increase in volumes, and of course, we're going to be seeing more and more orders coming to the market as more brokers uh, come to the trading floor, and of course, those who are trading online from their offices. Mm. So the market is upbeat. And um, I, for what I'm saying now, obviously, well, maybe it's too early to say that see the market closing in the green zone at the end of the day. However, I might, you know, and I, I, might, I might not be correct because the market is still very early. Absolutely, indeed, the market is very early. Uh, like for over two uh, uh, trade, uh, two consecutive trading sessions, we saw the market went back to red uh, zone, uh, as it were. Recall that when the uh, implementation of the unification of exchange rates was actually announced, we saw a rebound in the market. So much gain it uh, it uh, we saw there uh, over uh, that period. But again, we are seeing a downward trend in the market right now. What would you say is responsible for this? Are we seeing profit take? or in a way or what will you attribute that to yes you are correct you know when that policy was announced the market reacted positively not i mean of course the suspension of um, the C former cbn governor the market reacted to that positively and of course the unification of the exchange rate the market responded positively you know that is government policy and of course the market you know reacts to government policy. Again, you cannot have a market that continues to go up. Of course, we saw that increase Tuesday, Wednesday, but of course, people will take profits. Mm. So that's why we saw the market pulling back at Thursday and Friday, losing 1.31 and of course 0 0.03 as at Friday. Mm. However, we must also note that the market is going to cross, or it has even crossed, that 60,000 mark. So you can see that with Positive information, the market will go up. Traders and investors are positioning themselves for July because of earnings season. We are starting to see some Q2 reports coming. So what traders are doing now, and that's why I expect the market today to close in the positive territory because traders and investors are going to be repositioning themselves so that um, by the time we get to July, the, the earnings season they will have been there already and take advantage of some of these earnings numbers that will be coming to the bank mm. in the end of July. Interesting there, Mr. Charles Fagroga, stock market analyst. I must thank you for your time on Business Daily today. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. We'll keep a tab on you, of course, to know how the market will close today. We hope it closes in green, like you rightly predict, like you predicted. Uh, absolutely. Uh, from there, we take move into our. Uh, uh, the topic that we'll be looking at today, which is still on the monetary policy reform as well. Quite a whole lot has happened in, the, in that uh, area in the last couple of days. And of course, economists and analysts have been reacting to the development in that sector. We have uh, one of such uh, economists, Ali Awudu, who speaks on the program today. Cut down on a lot of problems, a lot of um, economic issues, a lot of unnecessary gains and benefit because what happens is that there's one exchange rate in the central bank and some people go through the back door to go and get dollar 
at very expensive, uh, very cheap amounts, and then they bring it back into the system around trip, fueling the exchange rate gap. You also notice that some banks do it also, fueling round tripping and encouraging inconsistencies in the economy, disparity in the exchange rate. It should not be so. I remember during uh, Sanusi's time, the exchange rate was harmonized because there was freedom, there was a good supply of forex, which is what we want. We don't want anybody to take advantage of the market. We don't want anybody to take advantage of the inconsistencies. We don't want that. And that, that affects the Naira, causes a lot of economic issues. That is not good for the economy at all, in any way, in any matter. So this unification of the exchange rate is good. It's only good for Nigeria because it eliminates the black market and it stops swelling the black market. And you now have a few Nigerians that think they have political power going behind back doors to get exchange rate at a cheap rate while they turn it back into the uh, black market and make gains on Nigerians. I think it's unfair. So liberalization of the exchange rate is a very welcome de development. And this has to do with demand and supply. It's just like the subsidy. A few Nigerians were taking advantage of the subsidy and becoming rich overnight. Mm -hmm. Now, the removal of subsidy, which was very expensive for the country. That means the typical uh, the, uh, uh, the Nigerian citizenry were being charged to pay for some few Nigerians becoming rich. And that's exactly what is happening in the exchange rate regime. In, interesting, uh, Ali Audu, uh, an, an economist there, uh, reacting to the, the reforms ongoing in the monetary policy. And again, the BDC operators, the one we call the black market in Nigeria, are also reacting to the development. They commended the policy. Take a listen. This new, new leadership, honestly, they are proactive. They knew where the shoe pinches, and they quickly go there and solve whatever problem it has. In fact, you will think this government has the rule for two years. And it's just a number of days. These are the things we were agitating to the last administration to do. Well, we all know they've done that one. And the new administration is doing its own the way they understand it. And we're attacking them. And we're praying for them. You see, this rate of uh, 450, 550, 650, it's a corruption. It's nothing. It's just corruption. And look at the way this government swiftly reacts to it. No, we thank them. Reactions there from various uh, uh, sectors, the economists, and of course the BDC operators who are directly involved in the trading of this currency. I have in the studio now uh, Wilson Agaba, is a policy and of course a business consultant. He joins me right here to dissect this topic. Good morning, and uh, always a, a pleasure to having you here. Thank you very much. Uh, indeed, you've listened to uh, some uh, reactions there to this yeah, uh, policy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is your immediate reaction to that? Oh, well, um I am not one that is easily excited about a policy mm. unless I scrutinize because every policy has its strengths mm. and weaknesses. Mm. I would usually want to analyze the strengths, look at the weaknesses, and then look at what needs to be done in order for the strength to surpass the weaknesses and the tendencies and capability of the people in charge to do those things. Mm. To start with, um, unification of the exchange rate, it's been long coming. We shouldn't have uh, multiple exchange rate within an economy. Mm. I can understand why 
uh, it was like that before. Because we are a developing country, and then if you want to stimulate production within the country and within your own economy, there are certain policies that you must put in place. Mm -hmm. so and they right. should only serve for such a time period. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for instance, you want to improve agriculture. All right, you might want to do a lot to subsidize uh, agricultural equipment, inputs, and all of that coming into the country. So by so doing, one of the ways you can incentivize it is to give them a different exchange window. You know, if you want to increase manufacturing within your economy, for instance, you can also give that kind of a window to people who want to bring in heavy equipment mm. and all of that that are not produced in the country. But I don't think that is something that should be there for a very long time. It should be um, a strategy for solving an existing problem, and once you solve it, you move ahead. Mm. But because of the fact that most times we make policies and don't intend to implement them and see them to the finish, mm. We usually start things and hang it there. Just like you mentioned, the issue of fair subsidy. It was never supposed to be something that will be there forever. Mm. But you see, it became like a bone in our neck. We couldn't swallow, <laughs> we couldn't spit out. Absolutely. I, I, there was something you mentioned about giving uh, a, a timeline. Yeah. Maybe making a short-term arrangement yeah. to benefit some maybe importers and exporters. Mm -hmm. Maybe that is what you're actually referring to. But now we have we had the, this multiple exchange rate before. Mm -hmm. We had the one for IIE, I, IIE window, which is the mm -hmm. one we've adopted right now. Mm -hmm. Where there's the one on the CBN official mm -hmm. uh, window as well, and of course the the regular black markets, mm. which some have, have said that uh, may actually go into ex extinction. Yeah. Now let's look at this. Now we have had this thing before, but there was in a way uh, I don't know how how you view it. Was it really effective? Because my, most, most exporters and importers were re really find it difficult to assess this uh, 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 the, uh, uh, special window that we talked about. Most of them yes. have to move, go down to the black market. The, you know, all of our problem in this country mm. has a common denominator. <laughs> and the name of that common denominator is corruption. Mm. And that is why I keep saying that unless we take corruption out of the way, or reduce it minimum to the barest minimum mm. and make it uh, uninteresting and unattractive to people. We cannot move anywhere. Now, see what happens. The special windows were created, and as you would have it, Nigerians, we could, people who know people in high places, will quickly go and position their companies and to qualify mm. for the minimum, mm. the barest minimum qualification to access such windows and then using their connection they access it mm. take it and round trip meanwhile the real business people do not have access and how does this happen mm. because government itself does not have a database of the businesses that need these things if you have a database and if you have been monitoring them for over some time, you can actually uh, target these policies at individual and specific businesses mm. Which are providing these you, services. You, you mentioned round tripping. There's yes. so much talk about this round tripping. Uh, do you think the CBN is innocent of this? Because it's difficult for you to do round tripping without uh, having the connection. I think it was uh, General Sani Abacha that once said that when insecurity lasts beyond One 24 day. hours, mm. government has a hand in it. <laughs> for the black market to thrive, for round tripping to thrive. Mm. The CBN definitely has a hand in it. This is not me accusing them. Mm. When I say they have a hand in it, it is either they are promoting it in one way or the other, knowingly or unknowingly, or they are seeing it and not doing anything about it. And I'll give you an idea of how I know that the CBN is deliberately not doing certain things. Mm and also doing certain things. For instance, if you give an official rate for exchange, and then there's a parallel market that you still fund, you give them uh, Forex, they go and sell at the margin. I mean, you are creating a market. Exactly. Then, let me tell you what happened recently. You could no longer pay for, say, your website, uh, uh, hosting yes. or your software subscription mm. using your Naira card. 
you have to go and get a, a debit card or a credit card and then you cannot tell your bank to debit your account with naira and credit your credit card mm -hmm. with dollar at the official rate so what do you do you go and source for dollar from the black market what has the cbn done they have created a market for the black market people mm. so this is why i say they are culpable because you ought to have identified the genuine business people who truly need this forex mm. in order to keep their businesses moving, moving. the Absolutely. government on the other side ought to figure out the services that many businesses are requiring from abroad mm. if we are hosting millions of websites here in nigeria what should the government do mm. to ensure that more forex does not go on website if we are doing advert on uh, facebook twitter and the rest of them what can the government do to make sure that we are not paying those people forex you are able to get them to open offices here why don't they collect their money in naira mm -hmm. you know so these are things that ought to have been put in place mm -hmm. now we have a new exchange uh unified exchange which is very good one of the things it will do is to kill round tripping round tripping will no longer happen the parallel market they are going to find it difficult because uh, they are almost out of business they have to source their own forex price. now and sell at their own price mm. anyhow they want it the banks too they will have to go into the business of sourcing for dollar and selling dollar at their own price the cbn will have less pressure and then they can concentrate on other things mm. but here is a problem businesses that depends on inputs from abroad are going to be getting it at a very high rate for now because the only thing that can bring down the dollar against the naira is if more dollar begins to change the naira mm. and that can only happen if we begin to produce yes. things that matters to the world Absolutely. don't forget that globalization is encroaching on us mm -hmm. and whatever we produce now have to be benchmarked against global standards absolutely you know interesting so quite quite a whole lot to be done uh, in that uh, sector, uh, by the way, Naira has appreciated in uh, uh, in Windows since uh, uh, we that policy has uh, was introduced. And uh, anyway, but now let's look at the new uh, circular that uh, CBN released yesterday. Oh yes, yes. Uh, uh, I mean, announcing the removal of limitation. Yes, from domiciliary accounts. Yes, for that now holders of the accounts can at least uh, withdraw ten thousand dollars. A per day, day. Yes. per day from their accounts. So, what do you think? Is it like the policy flip flop or some assault that we have no. always had? It's uh, you know we even need to suspend it uh, to suspend it in the first place. Yeah, we ought not to have. Mm. We should have targeted specific things that are making the outflow, mm. that are increasing the outflow, fix them so that the outflow will reduce. But you know we like quick fix. Mm. For we Nigeria, if your house is leaking and the water is falling on top of your face, you do two things. <laughs> buy a handkerchief and buy a bucket. <laughs> you clean your face and you use the bucket to collect the water and go and throw it away. Mm. Instead of climbing the, this thing and fixing your zinc or, or, or your roof. Mm. So we don't like to take the long way. We don't like to... Because to provide a permanent solution takes time, takes energy. We don't want to do that. Mm. So what we were doing in the last exchange regime was like buying handkerchief to clean your face when your house is leaking it is never going to be a permanent solution it's going to keep your face dry dry for a few this thing as soon as it start raining heavily mm. you can't control it that's what we had that time we didn't need to block all of those things and that discouraged a lot of foreign investors because they bring in their money from their own economy make money here and then you block them from repatriating their profit to the mother company mm. the mother company is counting on the profit from this com uh, from uh, the uh, company uh, uh, over here absolutely you can see that as soon as that was overturned a lot of foreign investors started coming, coming in. in you see uh, the stock market rebounded uh, uh, and all of that exactly we hope that will be sustained yeah. uh, let's look at uh, still on the exchange rate unification yeah. right now before now cbn uh, has been involved in defending the naira using yes. our foreign reserves yes. you know but now that in a way has it deplete, depleted yes, the, the, foreign the, the foreign reserve. So what do you think will happen to the reserve now, now that we don't need to go there and withdraw dollar, come and defend the Naira here? Well, uh, since we, don't, uh, we won't be using it to defend the Naira anymore, it means um, less pressure on it. We can actually grow it and take other advantages of it. Mm. But don't forget, 
this will have its own strength it will have its own weakness number one as you can see you said that naira has appreciated i don't think so it, it <laughs> well, depreciated well the uh, moment the first uh yes, unification it went to, was, it went over to seven, seven and ninety uh -huh. it came down to 500 mm -hmm. it moved back to seven and after this it morning came back to six six uh three but uh, the, yeah it closed at 63 on friday okay and as at this morning i was on another platform before mm -hmm. and i was talking on this same issue i checked and it was seven seven twenty something as, as at around seven thirty in okay, the morning. This morning yes that's what i got online so um what it means in the immediate is that we the, the things we bring in from other countries are going to be costlier for us in naira when you convert it mm. and since we are consuming economy that cost will go into the pricing of all those items for us it will skyrocket inflation mm. Mm. and it will make cost of living so high and pe more people become miserable mm. another impact of it is our foreign debt servicing if we had a foreign debt based on dollar and it was 461 as at the time we took it now that it is say, hovering around 690 and 700 mm, some have said we need our, to our raise our, more our, naira yes some have they said that our debt will jump by four trillion yes it's going to jump for, by that much mm. it's going to jump by the percentage that your uh, your naira has depreciated. I, I depreciated absolutely you understand so we need to gather more naira to be able to fund our debts so that's another aspect although it may encourage foreign investment because if you have a little amount of dollar and you bring it into nigeria it's going to be a lot mm. and it can do a lot of things to uh, start your business maybe maybe, maybe with know. this maybe the demand for dollar may reduce and of course that may strengthen it, it may reduce but run. again these things cannot work except you support it with the relevant monetary and fiscal policies which is what the, the new president has started oh yes uh, we we'll wish them all the very best because when they get it right, it also affects the economy as well. Of course, we want them to get, get it, right. it right. In fact, uh, we need them to, to get, get it, it right. right. Absolutely. <laughs> we seen Agaba, we seen. I must thank you for your time on Business Daily. Always a pleasure uh, sharing this uh, uh, studio with you. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. It's a yeah, pleasure. Appreciate. Yeah. yeah, with that, it's a wrap on Business Daily today. Join us again tomorrow for more. I am Yusuf Akogun.